miserable git. Well, can't be much fun being stuck in the air all day. Look, th th this is really quite embarrassing. You, you might have, have to put a message out of your PA system uh, for my wife. You see, I, I, I was over there, um, you know, looking at some shirts, and, and she was waiting over there for me. And then two seconds later, I turned around, and, and, and she'd gone. So I, I, I looked right around the store, no sign of her. So I, I said to myself, um, I'd better go down to the car park and wait by the car. So I did, but the car was gone. Uh, so I called the bus back home, and when I got there, I found that the whole house had been cleared out of all my wife's stuff, uh, her, her, her dresses, her jewellery, even her passport. So I... <laughs> She's left me, hasn't she? I think so. Thank you for your help. See that? Them's chicken scratchings. Sheep bite, 76. Just when I thought it was safe to go back in the barn, that bloody bull stands on me foot. I'm gonna need a bigger barn. Right! I hope you've been listening to everything I've said, even the most trivial sounding detail of any detail that could save you from any unnecessary accidents. Got it? <laughs> right, wonderful. Who's first? Ah, right then. Up you come there. Ready, lad? Of the propeller. Here. Yeah. I, uh, I said hello to Dennis in the street the other day. And, you know, he just walked past me. Ignored me. Walked past me like a zombie. Well, he has been depressed a lot lately. <laughs> oh, why is that? Harold, did you not hear? You know how Dennis likes to go au naturel in the garden? There. Yes. Well, he had a nasty accident while he was cutting the hedges. He snipped off his testicles. Oh, 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 oh that's horrible. Terrible. Here. <laughs> 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 we should go and visit him sometime. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, we should. Here. <laughs> See if he fancies a game of conkers. <laughs> Something for the weekend, Michael. <laughs> It's not just a key. This is the key. The key? Oh, yeah. This key can open any door in this nick. No. Oh, yeah. You better be very careful over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Twelve more years! <laughs> Must die! <laughs> but all in this 
song is it? Mm. In emergency break glass. <laughs> oh, no, no. Don't want to make a fuss. Fred? Maddie? How was the new boss then? Oh, he's all right. Young fella. Young? What sort of age? Late 20s, maybe. 26, 27? I don't know. Late 20s. Just asking. Was he wearing a suit? Yeah. What colour was the suit? Blue. Navy blue, sky blue? Yes, navy, navy, it was navy blue. Did it go well with his tie? Yes, Maddie, it went fine with his tie. What colour was his tie? I can't remember, Maddie. I was just asking. Did he have hair? Yes, Maddie. He had hair. He had brown hair. Light brown, dark brown? In the name of God, Maddie, it was brown. I was just asking. Did he have a goatee beard? No. A full beard? No. Moustache? Maddie, he had no facial hair. Please, I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? I was just asking. <laughs> Did they have shoes? <laughs> Were they slip-ons or lace-ups? Have you noticed how a man's dress sense changes after he hits 60? How do you mean? Mm -hmm. Just look at that lot at the bar. <laughs> Hi, Wasters. <laughs> They're still doing well, then. Eh? don't see the point of it. It's progress. That's the point. Excuse me. Back! I just wanted to... Uh... Not yet! Back! Back further! Go on! That's it. Now. Cashier number one, please. Cashier number one. For those of you who have just joined us, I'm Dave Davids, and I'm here today with Bruce Merriweather, the star of the hit BBC Sunday night detective serial, Breath Weasel. It's actually called A Place for Murder. What did I say? Breath Weasel. I'm so sorry. So, tell us about the show. A Place for Murder is about say, a very... I do like your shoes. And my, my brother-in-law, he's got a pair of lock like that. Michael Palmer, do you know him? No. Big Mick Palmer? I don't know. Are you sure? Because you're wearing his shoes. I bought these shoes myself. Anyway, a place for Do you for usually murder. wear shoes that are similar to Mick's? I've never seen Mick's shoes. Well, they're exactly like that. You definitely don't know him. No. Big Mick Palmer. No, he's a face like a crab. His dad plays the spoons. Can we move on? Yes, of course. Right. 
Tell us about Breath Weasel. A place for murder. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been saying Breath Weasel all day. I must be getting old. So, tell us about Breath Weasel. In A Place for Murder, I I'm, play I'm sorry, Bob I, I Henderson. I'm sorry, I must stop you there. We, we've run right out of time. <laughs> Bruce Merriweather. Um, what a lovely fella. Where's my brother-in-law, Big Mick Palmer's shoes? Eight o'clock, Sunday night, Breath Weasel. Don't miss it. <laughs> Looks like Billy Ocean's got himself stuck up that tree again. <laughs> come on. That's you, come on. Come on. Come Well, it's not so far away. It's just too good an opportunity for Jim to miss. And you can come up and stay. It's only a few hours in the coach. And we'll pop down and see you whenever we can. Ask if I can live with you. Mum, can Granny come and live with us? Well, Josh, what a lovely idea. Mum, we've had a lovely visit. Now, let's not spoil it. Sheila, look, we'll still bring over Josh whenever we can. You're right. I'm just being silly. Anyway, I always get plenty of visitors. There's that man who says he's from the gas board, but never has any ID. I could always let him in. Or I could start leaving my front door wide open so that anyone could just pop in. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Right. I think we'd better go. No. No. I'm just being stupid. Anyway. When you told me on the telephone, I, I started making preparations. No, Mum, you're just being silly. I can take the green line down to that lay-by just at the edge of town, flash a bit of leg. I'm sure that there's some sales rep who will pick me up, or maybe someone who's on the run from a secure unit. But now that you've given me that mobile phone, I can call you and tell you which... I'm bleeding to death in. 
left for dead in the mud among the tin cans and fox droppings and old copies of Razzle. Mom? See? Now look what you've done. Oh, this looks interesting. WWW Horny Housewives. Are you over 18 years of age? Oh, yes. Oh, baby. You filthy girl. Oh, that is enormous. Excuse me. Can I check these books out or what? Warmer, isn't it? What's an awful bother to use? Oh, no, not at all. No, you just fill it full of hot coals from the range <laughs> and then slip it in between the sheets. <laughs> you slide it in between the crisp white sheets. At least they should be crisp and white. <laughs> that silly girl thinks the squire hasn't noticed that she hasn't ironed them. <laughs> Perhaps she'd have had time to. Had she not been making eyes at the gardener's boy all afternoon? <laughs> bad girl, bad girl. Will she ever learn? Maybe she doesn't want to learn. <laughs> Squire can hear her now in the scullery. It's all very well for her. Snug and cosy in those tight layers of coarse woolen undergarments. But the coals in the squire's bed warmer are, are getting cold now. Should he empty it? No! No, he should make her eat from it. Eat from it, like a dog. <laughs> Such exquisite detail. Oh, dear. It's a lovely day out, Michael. It is that, Harold. How's the wife keeping? Did you not hear? Hear yeah, what? Ina passed away two months ago. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so you won't be wanting anything for the weekend, then, Michael? <laughs> no. And I love you too, Natasha. I, I really do. I mean, it's only your letters that have kept me going in this... in this hellhole. Wait two years. Dell, 
It's supposed to be a Christmas record. And I'm dreaming of a funky Christmas? Yeah, I just don't think we need the... the trip-hop treatment. Trip-hop? You must be joking. Trip-hop died in 2001. That's lounge clash. What are you looking for? Some mook to handle your harpsichord? I don't talk oboe, I talk break beats. If they're not break beats, they're fake beats. <laughs> Del, you've been here as long as the studio. You're not going anywhere. Everyone's very happy with your work. What? Really? Yeah, totally. Don't worry. Your job's as safe as houses. I wish you'd told me that before I had my knob pierced. <laughs> now, I, uh, I promised I'd bring a nude model for you to draw this week. And my very own daughter, Pamela, has kindly volunteered. So I don't want any sniggering. And remember that she's doing this out of kindness to help all of you. Now, at the risk of sounding boastful, my daughter's a very beautiful young girl. So you have a, a rare opportunity to draw the female form at its most aesthetically pleasing. I'll just go and fetch her. My daddy's just away to see the headmaster. So you can start drawing my beautiful body now. And the girl, she lollipop, it's a country. Fred? Maddie? So you got the bread and milk then? Yes, Maddie. Which shop did you go to? The one on the end of the road, Maddie. The one on the left or the one on the right? The left. How much did you pay for the bread? 30 odd pence. 32 pence, 33 pence. I, I don't know, um, 35 pence. 35 pence? I think that's gone up. Was the shop busy? No. How many people were in the shop? Two, Maddy. Two fellas? Please, Maddy, don't ask me to describe them. I can't remember, please, I mean... It doesn't really matter, does it? I was just asking. How much did you pay for the milk? 46 pence, Maddie. 46 pence exactly. Did you give them the exact money? Yes. Two twenties and six one pence pieces. Christ, Maddie, I don't know. Two twenties and three two-pence pieces. I don't know. Four tens of five and a one? Oh, please, Paddy, listen, just... Just listen to yourself. I mean, nobody needs that much detail, do they? Hmm? I was just asking. <laughs> two tens, four fives, two twos and two pennies. Oh, Maddie, it's an ambulance. I, I, I think I've broken my shoulder. Is it the left shoulder or is it the right?
looks so peaceful, doesn't he? He does. He just looks... He just looks like he's sleeping. <laughs> wakey, wakey, son, do it. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Come on, you silly gugger. Summer season starts next year. Yeah, silly gugger. Oh, Billy, he's dead. Jack's resting now. You can't rest your fist up. We've got songs to sing. I'll put my leather jacket on and we'll do the grease medley. Right, don't get go. What shall we do with Lord Billy? Well, Dad always said that he... he wanted Billy to be buried with him. I got some chills and the multiplying <laughs> and the blues in control and the power of Jack supplying. It's like chips are frying. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Come on. Wake up. Wake up. We got two ruby weddings and a permit for us, Andy. <laughs> I want to see his lips move. <laughs> Why are his lips not Stop.